All right, Jim Adams here again. We're going to do a uh, NG tube placement. Um, NG tubes are uncomfortable. Um, I've heard people talk about folks vomiting when you put it down. I've been putting them down for 20 years and I've never actually had a person vomit, but I've heard that they do. So, uh, this is the Sim Lab. This is the NG tube I'm going to use. Now, it would be in a packet that I'd have to rip open. So that's the only thing I'm not going to do is rip open a packet for this. And that is the one beautiful thing about the Sim Lab. The other thing about the Sim Lab is this mannequin, although it does have nares, it's very, very difficult to slide the tube down. Um, also, you do not want to use lubricant on these mannequins because it'll mess them up on the inside somehow, degrade them or something. I don't know, I was just told you're not allowed to do that. So what we're gonna do is when I put the NG tube down, I'm just gonna basically put it in the nair and go through the motion. I'm really not going to place it down inside of the mannequin, but I'm gonna do the motions and say exactly what I'd say. This is the sim lab, we are simulating. So, to get things started here, I'm going to do what you gotta do before every patient. I'm gonna check an order, because you don't wanna put an NG tube down on the wrong patient. That would probably get you into a lot of trouble with your employer. So I'm gonna check my order, place NG tube. Uh, it might be low intermittent suction, uh, it might be for like uh, meds if they can't swallow, um, but you gotta have an order in place NG tube. Then I'm going to uh, gather my supplies, bring them in the room, hit my little hand sanitizer thing, wash my hands. Then I'm going to provide adequate lighting. I'm going to tell my patient, I'm Jim Adams, I'm your nurse. I'm here to place NG tube down your nose the doctor ordered. Sometimes they'll say, well, what's that? It's a tube that goes from your nose, down the back of your throat to your esophagus, down into your stomach. And it's four, and then I'll tell them why the doctor ordered it. It's, it's to pull everything out of your stomach because nothing's moving through and it's backing up. Uh, it might be because they're GI bleeding, they're bleeding. It's to suction that blood out of your stomach. Uh, if it's for meds, it's because you can't swallow and they're wanting us to give bolus feedings and your meds through that, whatever the reason. You've also got to know the ways that you're going to check for placement on an NG tube, but we'll get to that in a couple minutes. Um, patient says okay. We've got a couple things to do to get ready. First thing, you have to know how far down you're gonna put the tube. So what I like to do is before I open my packet, I like to get my gloves out and put gloves on. Um, NG tube is a non-sterile procedure, but still, today I think patients feel more comfortable if you got gloves on when you're dealing with stuff that's gonna go inside of them. So I like to put on my gloves, rip open my bag, uh, packaging, I mean, pull out the NG tube. This is a Salem sump. Okay, a lot of people don't know what these are. Okay, this here, the blue one, is for air. It's a vent. Uh, when this is in your stomach, this will vent, vent air out. Um, this is the actual tube where you would be infusing your meds and whatnot. At the hospital, there's a section that will hook onto here that has a triple stop cock that you can flush stuff down, and it, but you'll see that when you get to the clinical area. Right now, in your packet, you have one of these little connectors. I just said connect it like that, and it's closed. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to check uh, the landmarks, find out how far down we're going to put this tube. Find the xiphoid process into the tube at the xiphoid process, up to the earlobe, to the nose. You can mark it with a piece of tape or you can go one, two, the third hash mark. Make sure you're counting from the end. Or you can go with the end of your tube, nose, ear, down to the xiphoid process, one, two, at the third hash. But either way, 
It's one of those that's the same, you can do it, you know, same thing, just doing it opposite way. So we are ready to get started. A couple things that I'll need is I will need a towel. Just in case. I have an emesis basin here in case they have to throw up. Or sometimes we say vomit. I have water. Uh, generally, you'll want a straw so that you can have them take a sip of water while you're putting the tube down. I tell the patient, how high do you need to be to swallow water? And they'll tell you how high they want to be sitting. Most people want to be sitting pretty high. I'm going to get the bed to a working height for me because now I'm actually going to start doing stuff to the patient. We're going to have to secure this to the patient somehow. So in your packet you have some of this plastic tape. I like a piece about four inches long. One end I will make a little um, tab and then tear, the, tear at the tab in half. Now to insert this in the patient we are going to open up our surgical lube and lubricate the end of the tube with surgical lube. I'm going to tell the patient what we're going to be doing. Now, uh, ma'am, what we're going to do is I'm going to start putting this tube down. I'm going to get down the back of your throat. Nasal pharynx is what it's called. Uh, we're going to want you to start swallowing. When you swallow, it helps that tube guide guides it down into your uh, esophagus so it can go right down to your lung. When I say swallow, I need you to swallow. You can take your uh, water and take a sip of water. Uh, sometimes people don't want to sip water while you're putting a tube down their nose, so they can just swallow. It's whatever the patient wants to do. Uh, if you feel like you got uh, you got to stop, we'll stop. But you know how important this is. Patients are sometimes here with things that are painful. I've had people beg me to save them because they thought they were going to explode when they had a, a twisted colon or a twisted intestine and nothing was going through. So put a tube down, got a couple liters back within a couple minutes and the patient thought he was saved. It was just power of the NG tube. So here we go. Patients are generally ready for this. You could refuse anything, so they could refuse, but they're in the hospital for a reason and usually they want it and they know how important it is. So we got a patient that will agree and will follow my instructions. So all right, so I want them to tilt their head forward a little bit. The neck brace are not going to be able to do this very well. They may not be able to at all. But there's what's called the sniff position. Put the tube in the nose. And what I'm going to do is start pushing. Now if I, re if I have any uh, obstruction, I'll we'll pull back. One thing you should do also before you get started is look in the nose for a deviated septum. It's also good to ask them if they have any, ever had any nasal surgery. Um, and if there is some type of obstruction or reason, try the other nair. So, and as the tube starts to slide down, I would continue pushing the tube down. And this is once again where we're simulating. Now when I get the tube in about yay far, it's going to be curling, think of the anatomy, curling through the sinus down to the nasal pharynx. I'm going to start saying swallow, swallow. That's when they can suck on the straw or they can just start doing the swallowing motion. Swallow. And when I say swallow and they do the swallowing motion, I'm going to push in a couple inches. And I'm going to wait till they're done swallowing. Swallow. And they can swallow again. Swallow. Swallow. And then when you are past that area with the tip, you can continue on to, until you are at the third hash mark. Then you stop. If I'm at the third hash mark, the patient shouldn't be coughing. If a patient's continually coughing <coughs> and they just can't <coughs> stop coughing, if a person's coughing, they're breathing. But that means you've probably 
got the NG tube in the lung. Also, I've seen NG tube get curled up in the mouth. Um, if a patient, if it goes down properly, um, before I actually start taping, I'm going to say open your mouth, and when they open their mouth, I'm just going to look and see if the tube's curled up in their mouth. Uh, generally, only a confused patient is going to have that happen and not tell you. A patient that's not confused will be opening their mouth for you anyway to show you something's coming in their mouth because they can feel it in their mouth. Um, so anyways, so we're at the third hash mark. The patient's tolerated it well. I'm ready to secure. I'm going to simply put this piece of tape. And when you're dealing with it, doing this, you are actually, you know, doing all this to the patient. Feeling on their head, you got your fingers on their nose, and you just want to be careful and poke them in the eye with your finger because that could really mess up the nurse patient relationship. Okay. Just wrap it around the other way. Okay. Um, so we've got the tube in place. Now I'm wanting to verify placement. There are three major things you can do to verify placement. This will probably be on some type of a test or quiz uh, sometime during your lab time. You can um, auscultate, uh, air bolus auscultation. You can uh, check residual pH and you can get a chest x-ray or a, a abdominal x-ray. So, get my stethoscope. Always tap your stethoscope, make sure that it, you're, you're hearing the noise. Okay, and then we are going to get our Tumi syringe. Once again, I'm going to palpate the xiphoid process a little bit to the left. Let's get that out of the way. A little bit to the left. And I'm going to push this uh, 20 mil air bolus. And I should hear it gurgle. That is checking air bolus auscultation. So it's NG tube verified via air bolus auscultation. If you don't hear the gurgle, it might not be in. You can try again, but you should be hearing that. If not, there's a problem. It could be that it's in the lung, and that's why you're not hearing it. Then if, it's, if you're not hearing the air bolus, you've got to try some of these other ways to verify placement. I would aspirate back with my Tumi syringe. Hopefully I'm getting some liquid out. Yellowish, greenish, if they're getting tube feeds, it might be tube feed color, but you should be getting something back. At least a little bit of something. Uh, then I would get my pH paper and you can have a little cup. Squirt some of that into the pH paper or into the cup and dip pH paper into it and look at the color change. Now for your test, there will probably be something about what pH verifies it's in the stomach. Look that up in your book. Gastric contents that we have, we can then replace them. Now you want to remember the number so that you can uh, chart that. There have been times I pulled off 60, put it in a cup, pulled off 60, put it in a cup. I pulled off 500 before you got to stop the feedings because it should be going through the patient. If things aren't moving through the patient, there's a reason and it's generally a, a big problem. So you stop the feeding, call the doctor in those instances. But generally you're going to have, you know, less than a couple ounces because the stomach empty. Now we are going to uh, get a chest x-ray uh, to verify placement of the NG tube.